Howdy do, rock buddies. Papa here. And we're still talking about the geologic history of Georgia and the eastern United States. And yes, today is an exciting day that we get to talk about the Acadian orogeny, the Acadian mountain building event. As you remember, we started off with about a billion years ago, we started off with a, a supercontinent called Rodinia. And then it rifted apart. We talked about that between 750 million and 550 million years ago. And we talked about the rift to drift sequence as the uh, continent pieces sank. We talked about the passive margin sediments that developed around the continents in a time of quiescence in between, in between these tectonic events. Then convergence started and the first convergent activity was the taconic mountain building event. So the next one will be the Acadian mountain building event we're going to talk about this time. And then after that came the Alleghenian mountain building event uh, when Africa crashed in to uh, the mainland of proto-North America, creating the supercontinent Pangaea. And then it rifted apart, oh, during the last of the dinosaur times. And uh, now we're in another period of quiescence, passive margin. Sooner or later, convergence will begin again, and another supercontinent will be put together. But that's, you and I will not get to see that. So, on with the Acadian mountain building event. Switch the camera around here. <clears throat> okay, this may look familiar to you. <clears throat> this is the, what the edge of <clears throat> North America looked like, eastern edge of North America looked like, after the tectonic mountain building event. So let's just look at some of these. This stuff right here, these are the island arcs that were formed in during the tectonic mountain building event that crashed into the northern part of the continent. Crashing and smashing tectonic mountain building event. And those erosion sediments filled up a foreland basin here and those erosion sediments up here are called the Queenston Delta. That was taconic. Now let's look at the southern part of the eastern United States. You remember Island Arc, volcanic Island Arc chain formed down here just like it did up there. And there was a back arc basin formed in this ocean space between the mainland and the Island Arc. Dahlonega Gold was pumped into this narrow ocean basin. And if you want to see this today, just go look at the islands of Japan. The sea, this would be like the Sea of Japan in here. And by the way, there is gold down under the Sea of Japan, and the Japanese people are, are actively seeking to get it along with many other metals and things. So, <clears throat> is there a Queenston Delta here? No. Why? Because there was no crashing during Taconic, this did not crash into the mainland. This did up here. Okay, so we've set the stage. Now comes the Acadian mountain building, the Acadian Rajni. Way, way out east of the Proto-America, an island arc chain began to form close to Africa. And it got bigger and bigger and bigger as it approached Proto-North America. Why did it get bigger? Because all this ocean crust between North America and the uh, developing island arc, we'll call it the Acadian uh, island arc, all this ocean crust got subducted, and where did it go? It, got, it went into building this Acadian piece of real estate, and Acadian got bigger and bigger and bigger, and pretty soon it was a microcontinent, much bigger than a volcanic island arc. Not as big as a full continent like Africa, <clears throat> but it had some weight and power, Behind it, and so during the Devonian period, which was 400 million years to about 350 million years, um, the Acadian orogeny occurred, in which the Acadian mountain microcontinent smashed into northern coast of North America, smash, crash, and it was added to that real estate. And these huge mountains, the Acadian microcontinent mountains, eroded into the same. Foreland Basin area, 
except there were a lot more sediments that eroded off Acadia than uh, the sediments that eroded off the Taconic Island Arc. Those sediments filled in this area here, and they are called the Catskill Delta. The Catskill Delta. You can find Catskill Delta deposits in New York, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, maybe a little bit in Kentucky, maybe just a hair in Virginia. Why aren't there, why aren't there Catskill Delta sediments down here? Because Acadia did not crash down here. Acadia crashed up north. But that was not the end of things. Now comes our part. And before I tell you this, I've got to talk about the San Andreas Fault in California. Everybody's heard of the San Andreas Fault. The San Andreas Fault runs all up and down north to south uh, of, of California on the coast. And there's some, uh, to the west of the San Andreas, Andreas Fault is the ocean plate plus some little hunks of continent crust that are attached to it. On the east side is the California continent crust. Well, the, San, the, the stuff on the west side of the San Andreas Fault is moving north relative to the material on the east side. Sliding, sliding, sliding. And that's why they have all the earthquakes in California because the sliding action gets hung up. And it's hung up and it's hung up and there's more and more forces put behind it. Finally, the hang up lets go and there's a big shift of ground, maybe 10 feet, maybe 20 feet, I don't know. And in some places, it just slides. And those are the places in California that have a lot of this slimy serpentinite down there that lubricates the two pieces. But in other places, it crashes because there's not enough serpentinite. And that's where you get the big earthquakes. Well, that is a common, that sliding up and down is a common occurrence during these uh, mountain building events, after these mountain building events. And that's what happened here during the Acadian mountain event. After Acadian microcontinent crashed and the mountains eroded into here, it began to move. Some geologists say it moved up north first, but whether it moved up north first or not, it definitely started moving south. It came down south, and it kind of stopped right in here, right beside this big piece of now dormant and eroded island arc. And we will call this piece, this upper piece, the um, inner Piedmont of Georgia and North Carolina, because that's what it's going to become. And it stopped for a while, and in here, the space between them, an ocean basin developed, and that ocean basin is now called our Cat Square Terrain. And I'll show you these on the map uh, in a minute. But So this ocean basin, Cat Square Ocean Basin formed between the Acadian microcontinent and this upper part uh, of this now dormant Taconic Island Arc that will become our inner Piedmont. Um, yeah, and so I'm now we're not calling this the Acadian microcontinent anymore. We're going to call it the Carolina super terrain or the Carolina terrain because that's what it's going to become. Okay, so after the Cat Square Basin was formed, um, Acadia try, began to try to push. I mean, Carolina terrain kept pushing south, and it broke the inner Piedmont loose from where it was attached, and the inner Piedmont and the Cat Square Basin, and the Carolina Train slid south along the Brevard Fault Zone. And as they slid south, they pushed all this, this other hunk of land up onto the other piece of um, dormant island arc up onto the land. That's going to be our eastern Blue Ridge province. And it smashed everything up against it and then things went then things went quiet so you've got what have you got then remember that Dahlonega gold belt that wasn't here it's now I got this pushed a little too much too far up let's do about like that the Dahlonega gold belt got pushed up first all in here along that Dahlonega gold belt and I'll show you where that is on the map then came the eastern Blue Ridge, the, the old dormant uh, southern piece of the island arc chain, um, including in it, it, included with it are island arc stuff plus all the continental shelf, 
Continental Slope and deep ocean deposits that were, had, had developed around it. And we call those the uh, Tallulah Falls Alligator Ash Formation. Um, and then came, whoops, hey, the wind's trying to blow the tech on it. I mean, the Acadian Raj need to pieces. Then came the Inner Piedmont. The Inner Piedmont is a, um, the southern, I mean, the, nor- the, the northern part of that ah, volcanic island chain. All right, the wind is trifling with us here today. Then, then came the Cat Square Basin. I Chihuahua. It's okay, though. Then came the Cat Square Basin, now rocks, and then the Carolina Train. That was the end of the Acadian orogeny. But it did a lot more than just affect, you know, Georgia and this part of North Carolina. Up in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park on the Tennessee-North Carolina border, it pushed big, giant um, swaths of rock on top of one another. There's some faults up there. One of them is called the Greenbrier Fault. That was one of the faults that was produced by this Acadian mountain building event. When when uh, the sliding along the Brevard Fault Zone happened. Okay? So, now let's look at the map, the geologic map of today. Achua. Okay. Here we go. Okay, let's look at those pieces. All along this fault line, which is delineates the western Blue Ridge from the eastern Blue Ridge, is the Dahlonega Gold Belt. There's Dahlonega, the heart of the Gold Belt. And it goes on up into North Carolina. Okay, now here, here's the Brevard Fault Zone. This is the big slider. And I got to tell you that, you know... Most of the faults, uh, virtually all the faults in Georgia, except the Brevard Fault Zone, are major thrust faults. What is a thrust fault? Thrust fault is is like um, if you have two pancakes and they're laying beside each other and you slide one pancake up on top of the other, that's a thrust fault. But the Brevard Fault Zone is not a thrust fault. The fault goes straight down instead of at a very steep slant like it would with the pancake deal. It's like... Um, two, um, two blocks of rock beside each other. The space between them goes straight down, up and down, vertical. And that's what the Brevard Fault Zone is. It's almost a vertical fault. Uh, so anyway, you've got your Western Blue Ridge, you've got your Dahlonega Gold Belt, your Western Blue Ridge, I mean Eastern Blue Ridge, excuse me, which consists of island art material plus... Uh, the sediments, continental shelf, continental slope, continental deep ocean sediments that were de- had um, been deposited around it. Here's the Tallulah Falls. See, doesn't it look like it's been rolled and smeared and smushed out and uh, squeezed out along this Brevard Fault Zone? And I think that's what happened. The the Brevard the fa- the sliding along the Brevard Fault Zone did a lot to deform these Tallulah Falls ocean deposits okay so you've got that eastern blue ridge now you have the inner piedmont hunk here island arc material for sure and then you've got the cat square terrain which is like a big funny looking piece of pie in georgia it goes on up all all these geologic provinces go on up north and south and um incidentally um and the cat square Terrain is made of rocks from um, sediments that came off both the Inner Piedmont and the Carolina Terrain. And incidentally, the Elberton Granite, if you've ever heard of that, was emplaced in this Cat Square Terrain much later than Devonian, much later than the Acadian Mountain Building. And here's the Carolina Terrain. It goes way under this yellow coastal plain um, but the coastal plain deposits are laying on top of it. Um, another interesting thing that happened during the Acadian orogeny, see this big purple hunk right here? That's called the Coweta Pluton, and it's got other names, but this Coweta Pluton formed 
during the tachonic when the um, subduction occurred, creating the back arc basin and the volcanic island chain. It was a big pluton. And when, th- when the Acadian orogeny came down and, s- and started pushing things up, it was pushed on top of everything else. It's on top of the Dahlonega Gold Belt. It's on top of the Eastern Blue Ridge, too. And it goes on up uh, into North Carolina. I'll tell you about that. We'll have a whole video on that. Um, a lot of ocean crust material in here. We'll have a video on the popcorn ultramafic site in North Georgia, uh, where you can get um, peridotite slash dunite, which is the uppermost mantle, uh, right in here. Uh, Yeah, right in here. And um, this purple spot is along I-75 north of Atlanta, and it is a piece of that back arc basin um, ocean crust, mid-ocean ridge expanding ocean crust that helped to create the um, Dahlonega Gold Belt. Okay. So that's the story on the Acadian orogeny. I hope a lot of that made sense, and I'll be following that this video up with other video, other other videos that talk about things associated with the Acadian orogeny. Thank you guys for watching, my rock buddies. I want you to have a great day, and please give me comments. Uh, about these, this video and all the videos, questions. I love to answer questions, and if you have uh, see things that I said wrong, I like to hear about that too. So, um, uh, we'll keep going with this thing, and have we'll have a great rock time together. All right, pop out.